Which Asian American athlete inspired you growing up? Let us know in the comments down below because here's a list of the 10 most influential Asian American athletes. Yeah, we're gonna go through and review each one of the 10 people on this list. And then of course, we're gonna give you our takeaway. Then we're gonna get to some athletes and or that didn't make this list. Maybe they were born in Asia or for whatever reason they weren't on here and then give you our breakdown of them too. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Andrew, May is over. However, we didn't get to all the AAPI month content that we wanted to. Yeah, true. I mean, I think every month is AAPI month on our channel, but also real quick, I think that seeing Asians achieve at a high level in sports, whether it's contact sports or individual sports, I think it's very important because it basically makes Asian Americans feel like we're more than just what people think we are. Right, you know? you're saying when the, what we think we are as what? Tech workers, maybe service workers, maybe medical yeah, workers. Or even just chefs. Like there's nothing wrong with any of those professions, but I think sports, because it's still rare to see an Asian achieve at a high level, that it's just really cool. Yeah, and it's like society maybe doesn't believe in us to be super good at sports. Maybe our own parents and community doesn't yeah. fully even encourage us, you know what I mean? Or give us the necessary support. I'm not blaming anybody, but there's just a lot of barriers to Asians being super good at sports right in yeah, america exactly so let's get into the list what's the number one asian athlete on this list all right so by the way this is not our list but we are giving our opinion shout out to michelle kwan mm. number one andrew she won 43 skating championships including two olympic medals a silver and a bronze in 2002 salt lake city now she's a retired figure skater in the u.s ambassador to belize where she got to talk andrew with another legend from the early 2000s shine Wow, what are they talking about? I um I remember growing up when I was really young, always hearing about Michelle Kwan, Christy Yamaguchi, and figure skating was a lot more in the news. I thought it was a bigger deal. It was kind of where a lot of the drama was with Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan and all that stuff, even though they were white. But I'm saying like, I guess like figure skating used to be a bigger deal, but shout out to her because that is a name from my childhood. Yeah, and at that time, you know, like you said, Christy Yamaguchi, there was also other not as high profile uh, Asian female figure skaters. Mm. And I feel like that was sort of like, Almost before even there was media representation, there was Olympic representation. That's true, yeah. And Asian. I think also her ability to transition from being an Olympic athlete to becoming a U.S. ambassador now, that's pretty interesting. Pretty impressive. Yeah, pretty impressive. Moving on, Andrew, we got BJ Penn, the first world jiu-jitsu championship master um, from Hawaii, half Hawaiian uh, slash Korean. Yeah, uh, BJ Penn, I remember hearing about him when I was younger, right? You you remember hearing that name, but I, I guess I didn't really know what he was doing, but I would I would hear that, like, oh, BJ Penn is like doing this, and then I'd be like, who is BJ Penn? Is that like Cal Penn? Because Cal Penn's an Indian dude. Right, there is a lot of professional fighters, Andrew, whether it's UFC, one championship, this kickboxing, Muay Thai coming out of Hawaii. Mm. And a lot of people in Hawaii are mixed Asian, obviously mixed with like a lot of other things or a lot of different Asians, plus Pacific Islander yeah. combined. Hey, uh, BJ Penn, that was a name before actually UFC. Before UFC actually started, there was like, you would just, that's why it wasn't as well known. And right, say. obviously now there's Max Holloway, who's also from Hawaii. There's a ton of fighters from Hawaii now. Um, and we're moving on, number three on the next Sharks list, we got Troy Palomalu. Mm. Oh man, I remember all the Samoans growing up, man. They would all rock his jersey on the Steelers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering, I was like, wait, how come all our friends are wearing Steelers fans? But uh, I would say, man, I mean, he's a Super Bowl champ. Pro Bowler, he's a big deal in the Samoan community. And I would say he's probably one of the more successful Samoan football players. Yeah, Even though I, there's, a, there's a lot of Islander football players. Yeah, there was a lot of Islanders that have had some career in the NFL as well. I remember growing up, the star quarterback for UW was Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. And he was kind of like Kyler Murray before Kyler Murray in the sense that he was very undersized. Obviously not necessarily as good as Kyler Murray, but shout out to Tuasa Sopo. Moving on to Chloe Kim, Andrew. Um, You did a food video with her. Yeah, shout I know out Chloe, to Chloe Kim. Kim. We did a video together. I'll leave it down below. But uh, Chloe Kim, especially for the younger generation and in snowboarding, because it's kind of like one of those cool, like bro-ish sports. For her to win the gold was pretty cool. Also, I think just like, She's just very relatable to like, you know, just the Gen Z, younger millennial market. So I think that's cool for a lot of people. Yeah, and she really embodies, I feel like that, like, dude, like I'm on, like, I'm in the snow, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she, you know? she's a chill girl. Uh, moving on, Nathan Chen, who was born in Salt Lake City. He is a six-time national champion, like his 
uh, Japanese rival Yuzuro Ice Prince Hanyu, and he beat and faced him in the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Yeah, I almost feel like Nathan Chen would have even been a bigger star if this was like 15 years ago in the Olympics when figure skating was even one of like the premier sports. Um, but yeah, shout out to him. I think he did well. To be honest, I'm not as much into figure skating. Like it doesn't really like... I guess influenced me personally at my age, but I could see that, you know, he's just a good representation. He's a nice guy. He is good looking. It, it helps. Yeah, and I do think it bridged the gap a little bit for a Chinese American to, uh, especially, you know, who knows if you want to get into the geopolitical thing, beat out a Japanese yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. you know, even though it's for America, but he's like Chinese. No, no, right? he, he, he decided he could have potentially been on team China, like what Eileen Gu did, but he chose not to. He, he wanted to play for the home team, which is America. Shout out. Um, Sunisa Lee, Andrew, born in St. Paul, Minnesota. She's the first Hmong American to ever win a gold medal when she took home the top award in the individual all-around gymnast event in Tokyo in 2021. Yeah, guys, we did a whole video about Sunisa Lee and the significance of what she did, obviously growing up in Seattle and the West Coast Also in really Gen Z, but more on the urban side. I feel like she represents a lot of Southeast Asian girls we knew growing up in South Seattle, also West Seattle. You yeah, I mean? yeah. She's a little bit uh, more. Chloe like, Kim's more like Bellevue. She's more yeah. like TikTok, I guess. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I mean Sunisa Lee's really cool, and uh, man, it'd be cool to like meet her one day. And I just feel like that, um, you know, for a group like the Hmong people, which are so small, and they don't even really have like a nation, it's almost like. This is like one of the Yeah, biggest, yeah, yeah. I know huge. what you're saying. You're saying it's like it's different than being from a bigger group where it's like you're almost picking from your representation that more relates to you. If your mom is like, that's who it is big, you know? Yeah. Um, moving on, we got Tiger Woods, Andrew. Tiger Woods, classic, probably widely considered, Andrew, the greatest golfer of all time. Yeah. Uh, I will say, obviously, him being half Asian. Uh, like, I feel like there was always debate on how Asian he was. Like, was yeah. it his Asian side or his black side that made him good at golfing? Uh, well, I feel like most people in America consider him black, but he did come out and say, I'm Cublin Asian one time, which was kind of like a controversial remark. Also, there was the racial draft on the Chappelle show. And then, of course, his voice is more, I guess, like whiter Asian. Um, I'll take hey, him. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Tiger. Hey, Did you go ahead and uh, delete those text messages? Listen, <laughs> Tiger is the tiger is a very asian animal i'll take it yo shout out to tiger woods man uh michael chang andrew michael chang was i believe at that time one of the youngest guys to ever win uh the the the, the grand slam yeah dude shout out to michael chang super quick um i think he did help get a lot of asian families into tennis i remember hearing his name a lot i got to meet him in seattle once because uh, he was, like, running this league that we were playing basketball no, at. No, he ran, like, a Christian Chinese sports league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, shout out to Michael Chang, man. I think that's big for especially Asians in tennis. For sure. Uh, it showed that Asians could be good at tennis even in the 80s and win the whole thing, even though he's very, very young. Somebody, uh, and last but not least on Next Sharks list, we got Bruce Lee. Wow. Of course, a legend, you know, invented his own martial arts. People still, you know, do Jeet Kune Do to this day. But this sort of leads us, Andrew, into our own list. And it's so interesting because, you know, everybody like sort of is into different things, right? So these are the athletes that inspired us growing up. Yeah. And uh, Andrew, there's a connection here with Bruce Lee, Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is considered the greatest Asian boxer of all time. Uh, there's a big, really big Japanese boxer right now. Yeah, Naoya, in a way, he's like pretty much the best in his weight class. Um, but Pacquiao actually, I think he's like an eight division world champion, which is hyper impressive. Because but, most people just stay in their division to dominate yeah, more, right? I, and I think actually I was watching a lot of different boxing opinions from professional people, like the commentators, and they pretty much put Pacquiao like, you could put him top five just because he dominated at different weight classes, even though he's not, like, undefeated like Mayweather. And you know what Pacquiao said? He said, yes, I was inspired by Bruce Lee because he values a more offensive-centric approach, which is more one of the tenets of Jeet Kune Do. Mm. Obviously, as a derivative of Wing Chun. Moving on to baseball, and we grew up in Seattle, man. Ichiro. Wow. Ichiro was the man, Yo, man. Ichiro. That's Sasaki, too. Yo, Ichiro was so... And I think Ichiro was cool, too. Like, yeah. he was actually cool. Like he acts his, cool. He looks cool, right? His goatee yeah. was cool. He talked cool, even though he didn't really talk that much. But that was kind of cool. I remember there talk. was like, "What's your favorite show?" And then he would just go, "Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants." Um, but very personable though. You know what I mean? Uh, of course, nowadays they got Shohei Otani. I believe Andrew. They both won MVP. Yeah. So Ichiro was the Japanese MVP. Shohei Otani as well. Um, moving on, Andrew, to the fight world. Uh, Korean Zombie. 
was yeah. huge. He was one of the biggest MMA fighters growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was huge, especially like we were in college and uh, we had more Korean friends. They were super into him. So I think that was influential. Before that, even it was Kung Lei. Kung Lei mm. came before UFC. Right, really he was got fighting that. in... Uh, I don't, Kickboxing. Yeah. I don't know what that league was called. There was, was a lot of leagues before, like yeah. the consolidation. It was an it. MMA league before UFC. And became uh, that actually, shout factor. out to the part Asian Brazilians too, Andrew Lyoto Machida. Mm. You know, a lot of these guys, uh, you know, part Asian or like Japanese dads or whatever, like that. Of course, there's a lot of current fighters that are really popping. Andrew Zhang Wei Li, Song Ya Dong, Du Ho Choi, Andrew Rod Tang. Yeah, Andrew. I think Rod Tang's videos fighting Muay Thai. It's some of the craziest things I ever seen. Oi! When he just like, Oi! Andrew, Andrew, he just lets people hit him four times and then he beats them up. It is insane. Yo, Very inspiring. Andrew, moving on to the NFL, I even followed Scott Fujita, who as it turns out, Andrew, is not part Japanese. It's because his step-grandfather was Japanese. So interesting. But yeah, that was actually like a thing growing up. I mean, obviously with that last name, everybody assumes he's uh, Asian, but uh, Eugene Chung was actually the cousin of of our Taekwondo master, yo, master shout Kim. Out to, hey, yo, shout out to fantastic Korean Mike Kim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His dad was our Taekwondo master growing up, That's and his funny. cousin was Eugene Chung, who mm. was the first full Asian, you know, the super looked Asian to play in the NFL. Yeah, and then Heinz Ward won some Super Bowl along with Troy Palomalu, uh, Doug Baldwin, Taylor Rapp, our friend Patrick Chung, um, who's like part Chinese. Oh, from yo, the shout out to side. Dat Win. Yeah, Dat Win, a full Vietnamese guy was like a pro bowler on the defensive side. Right, obviously Kyler Murray, Ed Wang, um, a lot of the Islander guys, man. A Yo, lot. shout out to Samoans, Tongans, Guamanians, Micronesians, yeah. Polynesians, Hawaiians. What up, Oos? Yeah. Um, Andrew, of course, we're moving into the NBA section now. We've got Jeremy Lin. Yeah. You know, we nothing needs to be more said about him other than I guess one of the most interesting things about Jeremy is that he broke a lot of stereotypes and he confirmed a lot of stereotypes too because he still went to Harvard yeah but I would say Jeremy Lin on this list is probably one of probably if the f most famous yeah full Asian yeah um Andrew Yao Ming Yao Ming was yo cool. Andrew remember dad would take us to all the Yao Ming games our dad was not big on taking us to Sonics games growing up but he was taking us to all the Yao Ming games. We get good tickets. So we went to a uh, Yao Ming game, I remember. And then our dad painted a poster because I was like, yo, we got to bring a poster. And then he wrote Jiao. Yeah, right. right? Yao Ming, and that Jiao. was like the first time. Like, I didn't even speak Chinese. I didn't even know really what Jiao meant. But dad wrote it. And then somebody asked me and was like, hey, man, what does that mean? And then I was just like, I don't know, but it's positive. <laughs> Yo, I remember Yao Ming was in the layup line, and he looked up at the signs, though. Mm. I always thought that was tight, man. Um, Utah Watanabe, Rui Hachimura. Yeah. Andrew, these guys are currently, they're going to be in the NBA next year from Japan. Japan's got some great basketball training systems right now. But we got to go to the lesser-known NBA players. And, Andrew, you know we be following this. A lot of people don't follow this. We follow this. Mm. Andrew, Utah Tabuse. Yeah. Do a lot of people know about this guy? Nah, man. He was kind of before the days of uh, social media. E. J. Lan also considered the Chinese Kevin Garnett. He's still playing in China, but he had some decent years in America and the NBA, but it man, just never I, I think He probably didn't live up to the expectations. I think it was a lottery pick. Um, Menge Batir, Andrew, who is actually a inner Mongolian person from China. Yeah. So it's like his ethnic wise, I guess he's like actually Mongolian. But yo, I'll tell you this, man. That has got to be one of the strongest guys ever. Yeah. Uh, they had this gigantic Korean guy, Ha Sung Jin. I remember he played for the Portland Trailblazers. I mean, dude, this guy is huge. You know, he didn't really last too long in the NBA, but, you know, I, I think there's, there's actually a couple Korean college players right now that could make the NBA right now. Yeah, I knew somebody who knew Ha Sung Jin from college. Uh, Sun Yue won a championship with the Lakers, Andrew. Actually, he wasn't on the playoff roster, but he got a ring. He still gets the ring, yeah. Um, I think Sun Yue, he, he could have been good, but I just think, you know, because he was tall and he had some point guard skills, it was just, you know, maybe a lack of burst, lack of scoring explosiveness. Oh, somebody who did have a lot of scoring explosiveness, Andrew, Wang Ji Ji. Yeah. Low key, this guy has multiple 20-point games for the Clippers. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, uh, and then there's another guy, Zhou Qi. I believe Zhou Qi is playing... He's not playing in China right now. I think right? he's playing the NBL yeah, in Australia. Yeah, yeah, he's playing in Australia right now. So I think that's an interesting uh, move for him. Yuki Togashi, these are guys who are really more in the summer league. Or G League. Yeah, or G League, but they didn't quite make it to the NBA. Yudai Baba, actually, I think still has a chance to make it 
into the G League right now. No, no, he's in the G League. He has a, he might have a chance to make it to the NBA. Yeah, okay. I think he's, right. he's got a chance. He's got a chance. He's just got to get the shooting numbers up. Sean Chen from Taiwan mm. was also a guy that was uh, a lot of people were looking at, you know, summer league, G League player. Ding Hang Yu Huang getting buckets in the summer league. Oh, dang. Play, he plays like uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich or yeah. Bojan Bogdanovich, yeah, right? He, the he, Pistons he, guy. He had a flamethrower, man. So, I mean, I think that everybody looks, Andrew, at like different sports to get their inspiration, right? Yeah, and I, and I think that, let's be honest, guys, there's always like that tribalism where you relate to somebody more if they're more from your background, right? Like if they're Chinese, I get it. Like you're probably more likely to feel some closeness with them. Or, or if they're Korean, or if, if they just look like you, even if they're just of the same Asian. Some people don't care and they're just happy to see any Asian. You know what I mean? That represents a larger group. So I think like... It can be, it just all depends on what sport you're into and what you're looking for. For you sure, for mean? sure. Shout out to the mixed Asians as well. Jordan yeah. Clarkson, Jalen Green. Yeah, I mean, some people take a lot of pride even with the mixed Asians or some people take pride. Um, even I know some Chinese people who are not as much into Jeremy Lin, right? Right. Because like maybe they didn't relate to him per se or, um, but then like they relate to other people. So I guess basically I think there are enough Asian athletes at this time on the way that like you can find one you relate to yeah for sure and i do think that athletics is really cool um because it obviously runs counter to asian stereotypes right exactly. uh exactly. i'm not saying that it's bad to be good at things that are stereotypically asian either because that's what makes us strong or have you know the lives that we have but also it's good to counterbalance that anyway let us know who in the comment section below is an asian american athlete that you were inspired by growing up uh they could be part asian um let us know what you thought of our analysis and until next time we the hot pot boys we out Peace.